let's get into this. Um, I'm going to show you guys 14 hours of screen capture footage in, I'm hoping, less than 20 minutes. Uh, even after I boiled it all down, took out every time um, I did something repetitive like mask out a raven or, or uh, went and did a Google search for something or, you know, anything that was took extra time, I cut that out. Uh, I then sped everything up a thousand percent and uh, I still ended up with 55 minutes worth of footage. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to do four frames. All right, we're going to run them at the same time. I'm going to record this in HD. So if you want to go back and see anything in any one of the frames, you should be able to see it uh, in HD quality um, well enough to make out what I'm doing. Although it being at a thousand percent might not be able to pick out the exact details of what I'm doing, but uh, it'll give you a good idea of what goes into one of these shots. Um, and I'm going to do a commentary over this one. I'm going to try and give you guys my motivation uh, behind why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, hopefully it's a little informative. And uh, hopefully it, it adds a little bit more to the, the piece in the end as well. So with all that said... Um, why don't we get started and get these four frames up, shall we? I have a number designated to each one so that you can keep track of what the heck I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. Where should we start? Let's start uh, frame two. All right, I'm, I'm working on makeup. I almost always work on people's makeup. Uh, I Even when I have somebody doing professional makeup, I still do touch up work on makeup. There's always just a little something I feel like I can tweak to make it a little bit better. And so I spent just a little bit, not too much time. I, I also almost always work on uh, cat's eyes and things like that for the uh, eyelashes. So let's talk about black ink. Um, that came from several different sources. I've got two source images of, of like uh, black ink that was, I think it's in water or something like that to give me the general effect. And then I needed to expand on that. Now I use the, you'll see in screen three, I use the warp tool uh, or, or free transform and then warp to get the ink to do generally what I want it to do. But then I have to, and you can see in screen two and then a little bit down on screen four, I had to actually go in and paint this stuff in by hand to get it to tie in together with the raven that's that's uh, coming out of the amulet. And then I also wanted to make sure that since I had it in the one spot with the, with the raven that's coming out of the amulet, I wanted to continue that theme with all the other ravens and so what I needed to do is go in and paint all that in by hand for each one of them and I used a combination of just uh, just painting with uh, with a regular brush and then using the smudge tool to uh, you know finesse it the way I wanted it to go um, that was that was like it was tedious but it was also very um, I guess you could say um, fulfilling because it, it it gave it more of a traditional art feel to me. It, it, it felt more like I was sitting down at uh, you know my drafting table and actually working on a, a, a an illustration. And so uh, that was a that was a nice extra element in this that uh, really made this piece 
a little something more for me. I did, I put in some of that blue magic uh, coming out of that amulet there, or the, the necklace piece, pendant, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and to really ground it, you really have to work on the atmosphere that goes around it, uh, the, the lighting that emanates from it. Those things really help ground, ground uh, these extra elements that aren't actually there in the real picture. Um, in frame one, uh, you, we just looked at uh, part of my early process in which I was thinking that I was going to put flames in here and uh, that didn't work out so well. It's one of the things I love about digital is that I can try out whatever I want and if it doesn't work I can just turn off that layer. Um, but what it did do was it gave me a jumping off point. Uh, the heat, as you can see I'm fl flicking back and forth um, on that layer. Um, the heat waves that I put in there for that uh, scene um, gave me the idea of this kind of like energy emanating from Samantha. And it was from there that I then thought, well, what could we have other things emanating? And so that's where I got the idea to get a raven in there um, eventually. Uh, at first, it was just going to be a raven sitting on her shoulder or something like that. And it eventually it progressed into what it ended up being, which was this kind of like uh, dark magic. Um, frame two, we're putting in some new legs for this guy because uh, he was in the grass or something and didn't have any legs. Uh, all these uh, ravens and uh, all the elements that I used for this were just things I found on uh, Google image search. Um, so there's nothing like they're not cut out for me already. Uh, there's nothing special about them. They're just I just searched and searched for any kind of raven that would have similar lighting to the scene. Something else that I did for this this piece was um, I created a lot of uh, splatter brushes. Not a whole lot, a few splatter brushes. And that's how I got part of that effect. Um, with the extra ink, like, like kind of like a dissolve pattern. You can see there in screen three, I'm making a, uh, a brush so I can get a little bit more of this splatter effect going on. I was doing a lot of it by hand at first, and I realized that for a, most of it, I could get away with, you know, just fudging a splatter brush. I don't want to use it too much because it looks repetitive and I don't like the look of, you know, a repetitive look in um, the overall composition. I think it takes away from it. But uh, there are, there were spots in there where if I used the splatter brush both as uh, a way to paint and then erase, I could, and, and also combined it with rotating the screen around, I could get enough variation that um, it all worked together nicely. What else do we got going on here? Um, more masking of birds. Um, blurring, I do a lot of blurring uh, of my different elements. Uh, it's very important to me to create depth in a photograph and I wanted to try and keep this as photorealistic as I could and in order to do that, I needed the uh, different elements of the ravens to look like they were uh, actually there, that they followed the depth of field of the shot as it was taken. Um, so I spent a lot of time messing with that, fine-tuning the blurring on each one of these ravens and even adding in some motion blur. Uh, for the ones where it seemed appropriate, uh, like this one in screen, uh, screen four, that bird when I originally brought him in was, uh, you know, tack sharp, and now he looks like or she could be a she. Uh, now it looks like uh, it's actually flying off in the background and is far enough in our, you know, field that it uh, is a little bit blurry with the bokeh. Um, let's see where are we at here. 
So, something I thought I'd make a note of really quick. Uh, up in uh, frame one, you're gonna see here in a moment, I'm gonna click over to uh, capture one is where I'm doing my raw conversion for this. I thought I would point that out because a number of the uh, critique videos that I do uh, talks a lot about um, Lightroom and I use Lightroom mostly for workflow. I find that it's very good for getting through a lot of work quickly. Uh, Capture One not so great in that department but it is amazing in uh, how it converts raw and uh, just the information you can get out of it both uh, the dynamic range and the uh, way it handles colors and tones is I think um, far superior to what Lightroom does and so uh, yeah for all my personal projects I use Capture One to uh, get all that information out of each shot. Smoke up there in screen two originally I started out using a lot more smoke and I usually put in smoke to help mask the fact that I am compositing smoke is a great uh, tool smoke fire anything that you can get in there um, that you can layer up helps to hide the fact that uh, you're compositing things layers on top of layers um, I ended up pulling back a lot on the smoke and the reason I did that is because I felt like the more smoke I added to this the less photorealistic it was um, so you'll see a lot of the smoke I start out really heavy with smoke and you're gonna see I'm gonna pull it back a lot um, talking about trying different things down in frame 3 uh, we'll see where I mask out in it uh, an entire raven uh, put it in place and then decide nah let's try a different raven and uh, put it there and decide nah maybe the other shoulder I really wanted two ravens for some reason uh, one on each shoulder and I actually ended up getting rid of the one on the opposite shoulder because the quality of the photograph just wasn't it wasn't on par with the other ravens in the shot so I got rid of even though I really liked the uh, how that raven was emoting, uh, I ended up getting rid of it just because it did not gel with everything else. The ones fighting in the background down in frame four, those were fun to find. I liked putting those guys in, um, and I like the idea of, you know, just this mess coming off of them as they are, uh, you know, not being so friendly to each other. shadows up in frame two. I did a lot of blurring of that uh, inky mess as well. And I really loved drawing this ink you can see in frame three. Uh, just drawing by hand the ink dripping out of the uh, raven's mouth and uh, you know and, and putting it on the other ones as well the ones that are by your feet. Um, Yeah. Up in frame two, you can see where I am pulling things back a little bit. Uh, and I'm also getting started on trying out a new idea. This is one of the things that added a lot of time to the overall process. I had the idea of doing this almost like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a dispersion or a uh, scatter or splatter or explosion technique or something like that so I had to look it up um, figure out how other people did it and then change it to suit my needs um, so I'm playing with some different things and seeing how it looks and uh, I ended up coming on a process that I like uh, that worked well for this and I might try it some other places too just to just to see what it does um, when I uh, expand the scope of it and, and use it more as a uh, focal point instead of a something to add to the uh, overall texture of a shot. Let's see, let's see what else we got here. 
down in frame three, uh, we are, I'm, I'm messing with some lighting. Actually, I'm not messing with it now because we just skipped past it. But uh, for me, uh, color temperature, color temperature uh, and light is super important on composites. Um, none of these had the same color temperature, obviously. I mean, you're pulling from so many different resources. Uh, none of them had the same kind of color temperature throughout the entire photo and nor the same levels throughout the entire photo. So I had to, for each one of these elements, I had to do a specific adjustment to those, um, those levels with color and everything to get it to mesh with the overall, uh, the overall composite. Uh, da -da -da -da. Where else we got going? Smoke. I pulled back a lot on the smoke. Uh, you can see if you compare frame one to frame four, I went through this whole process where I wanted a lot of smoke around that raven. <clears throat> and I ended up uh, pulling it way back, having it just barely poof out on the initial uh, where, where the uh, raven initially emanates from. Uh, and then I had some coming off of the wings. We're actually coming up to the end. We're getting close. We're getting so close. What we're going to do when we get to the end here, we're going to pull out uh, frame four and look at just the very end of the composite. Frame one, I was messing around uh, a little bit. That up lighting, not very flattering around the nose, if, if you weren't sure. Um, so I kind of pulled back on that uh, and did a little re-painting uh, of the nose to uh, fix that up. Um, here we are towards the end of one of the last things I did. I, because this raven was a focal point, I put a great deal of time into it. Uh, and one of the very last things I did was uh, I wanted it a little bit more three-dimensional with that smoke. The smoke looked a little too flat being behind the wings. So what I did was I brought in some more uh, real smoke and I also did a little hand painting of my own smoke to give it a more three-dimensional look um, so that the smoke is also in front of the raven um, and as well as behind and I think that helped tie it all in together. I also pulled back on a whole lot of this stuff. Um, it looks good at first uh, but then as it gets layered it starts to get too thick so I end up pulling back on a lot of these. Um, more of the smoke coming out of the mouth. And uh, that's it, guys. That is our entire process with the Raven. You just watched 14 hours of my life in, uh, let's see, what's this say, 18 minutes. So here is where I humbly ask for your help. Tether Tools has teamed up with Dark Beauty Magazine to put on a creative composition photo contest. The contest runs through the end of July and it's voter choice, all right? So that's, that's you guys out there, right? Now, the reason the contest means so much to me is um, it's not so much about the prizes or anything like that. It's really all about uh, the write-ups that are going to go up on tethertalk.com and into Dark Beauty Magazine. Now, for me, even creating stuff like what you just saw would not be possible without Dark Beauty Magazine. Dark Beauty Magazine, um, seeing the kind of work that they post day in and day out, really inspired me. So, seeing my work in the, the very periodical that inspired me to create that work is it's more about uh, a step on a creative journey. It's um, validation of seeing my work in amongst the, that of my peers, uh, the people that I look up to. And really that's, 
that's the gist of it. That's what it's all about for me right now. Is I just, I just seeing my work there would be, um, it would be a big deal. But I can't do that without your help. And so, what I need you to do, if you have the time and you've got the spare email addresses, um, follow the link that I'll put in the description. What you need to do now, the Facebook like doesn't work as a vote, unfortunately. You have to submit your email address and then confirm it once they send you an email confirming that you are a real person and doing a real vote and not a, a, a fake spammy vote. Um, and yeah, that's really all you have to do. Or if you want to go above and beyond, you could always ask your friends, share this video, um, tell others to go check out the work and hopefully give a vote to it as well. And um, that's it. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, give the video a like. Let me know what you liked about this video. Uh, did the four screens work? Did it, uh, was it too much? Uh, was there anything that you would like to know more about? Uh, put it all down there in the comment section. I'll try to get to everything that I can. And uh, remember, voting goes through to the end of July. So if you have a chance, please go do that. And uh, until next time, I bid you adieu. And uh, ciao.